I'm going to attempt now to pull a Myron Fagan on you all and be the Wizard of Oz that you guys seek in life and tell you all the very truths that will befell this world as we know it in its entirety with no filter, no political correctness, no BS. See, I was like most people. I grew up thinking that no really means no, but that was only according to the system. And as I became of age and I matured, I grew up realizing that when it comes to the system, no really means yes, and vice versa. Very few people that you or I will ever know in this life will see in all its span just how true and ironic that truly is. So, that being said, since I know these truths, I just go about my business and live like nothing happened. Here are just a handful of the countless examples as to why humanity has officially dug itself six feet below the ground. You're not going to like it. I'm not going to like telling you this. But at the end of the day, it is not something I want to tell you. This is something that I need to tell you and something that you need to accept before inevitably it becomes too late and you all end up shafting yourselves to complete hell. Let us begin. Let me remind you all that the following content contains graphic content that only conservative God-fearing Trumpers can truly bear witness to without being offended by even the most trivial and insignificant parts of it. Alas, I ask you now to close your eyes as I communicate to God a prayer upon all of our behalves. Rest peacefully, all ye who fight for our freedom. Your memory will be forever onward remembered. Lord, bless these fine men and women who sacrifice, and should we do wrong by electing you serve us, forgive us for being gullible and brainwashed by our own lies. We all have too much already to prove to ourselves as is currently, as our formation and creation is your will for humankind. Bless us, dear Almighty Lord of Justice, so that we can see and fully realize the warnings you've helped us see since our dawn long, long ago. We ask that you allow us into our bodies to take full control of us, so that we will one day act upon your prophecy and kill Satan's evil. We beg and pray all this unto you, mighty and fair God. Amen. Now folks, this is the picture in question. By the way, I compiled this. These are the millennial generation. The generation of which one Kevin the Skull Anderson grew up in. These are the people that are supposedly going to save our world from itself. And people at or around my age are doing absolutely retarded things 
which nobody can ever truly explain. Why? I do not know. I do not care to know. I do not even need to know because I already know. It is you that needs to know this. You, the brainwashed, misinformed masses. You need to know. The fainting game is real. Tide pods. Bleach. Deodorant challenge. Bat bomb craze. Condom challenge. Eraser challenge. Cinnamon challenge. What's next? Fingers up the butt, taste it on the fucking mouth challenge? I don't know. I don't even care. And to be quite frank, I don't think you should either. <sighs> to David Hall, and all the millennial ding that jack off fucktards who think deliberately trying to kill yourself or someone else for a YouTube challenge is anywhere remotely close to being even a half decent idea at best. I have one question that I and everyone of my age group deserve an answer for. On second thought, hell, you answering my questions will never stop us. So, I'll answer them on your behalf. So, in all seriousness, out of sheer rhetoric, I need to know right now, all kidding aside, WHAT THE FUCK IS WRONG WITH Y'ALL?! You dumb shit sacks pour detergent all over your arms, knowing good and damn well you'll render your arms burnt well into the third degree, and you want me to feel sorry for you, sorry sucks? Fuck you all! You idiots! You asses! Morons! It doesn't fucking work! Ever! And may I be damned by the good lord himself if you try to tell me otherwise! Here's what really bothers me, and I'm pretty sure that it bothers you too. As a matter of fact, hell, I am completely and absolutely sure that it bothers you to the highest of hells. The Department of Justice of the United States of America. We pro domina Justitia Sequidum. They are supposed to live by that statement, by that slogan, that moniker, that fact, but they simply refuse to do so, even though their mission statement, and I quote, is to enforce the law and defend the interests of the United States according to the law to ensure public safety against threats both foreign and domestic to provide legal federal leadership in preventing and controlling crime to seek just punishment for those guilty of unlawful behavior and by now I'm entirely sure just as much as God is and bless him that you all know precisely who they are and to ensure fair and impartial administration of justice for all Americans, all Americans, indigenous and otherwise. See, most of you people may see that statement as being their coup de grace, as being their goal in life, but in reality, it's everything that they hate. The people of the American Department of Justice do not live 
by these words because they are the exact opposite of what they were created to live by. Check this shit out. You're never going to believe it. The United States Department of Justice. Justice. So, instead of qui pro domina justicia sequitur, they actually live by the moniker qui pro domina satana sequitur. And their actual mission statement, unlike the one I previously mentioned earlier, and again, you're not going to like this, and I'm not going to like it either, but we're going to brace through this together, is to distort the law and defend the interests of the New World Order according to Sharia law, to ignore public safety against all threats, foreign and domestic, to obstruct federal leadership in preventing and controlling crime, to seek full punishment for those guilty of lawful behavior, meaning the criminals get off scot-free, the innocent are executed, and to ensure biased and unfounded administration of justice for all Americans who do not convert to Islam or Allah or the Muslim faith, meaning anyone that does not worship Sharia law and ISIS and Al-Qaeda and Hamas and the Taliban and Hezbollah and so on, those people are going to get killed by the government. They're all going to be killed by the government which we elected. And I'm talking about us here. They're going to kill us. You know the hashtag that I use in many of my Twitter posts as of recent? Hashtag deep state and deep shit or as I like to put it deep state deep in shit you realize that this hashtag is so more so much more unfathomably prophetic than the average human being may ever truly fathom or understand or know or acknowledge YouTube Adam Weishaupt YouTube Andrew Jackson, YouTube Democracy, YouTube Barack Obama, YouTube the Bush family, YouTube the Clinton Foundation, YouTube the Federal Reserve, YouTube Myron Fagan's speech on the bastardization of humanity as a whole, and watch the exact two and a half hour audio clip of it, which is available specifically as an MP4 video on YouTube. And you will see precisely what I mean and what I say and what I'm talking about. People, the government is going to kill you all because you don't worship Islam or Muslim faiths. They're going to kill you all because they support Satan and they worship Satan and they consider him God because he never does wrong bullshit. If you're not mad at this, if you're not mad by this statement, this is only the tip of the tip of the iceberg, people. We're just getting started. Check this out. These signs are all there. Adam Weishaupt, Andrew Jackson, Democracy, YouTube. Karl Marx, 
9-11, Columbine, Sandy Hook, Mass Shootings, Google Man, Wikipedia has legit, completely accurate depictions and articles explaining liberalism, communism, and Hitler. And Stalin. The Clinton Foundation, the Federal Reserve, Democrats in a nutshell, terrorism, Barack Obama, the Nazis, the Trail of Tears, Christopher Columbus, and I'm not talking about the film director, I'm talking about the man who lived 500 years before the film director, the same guy who invaded America and trespassed upon what was then and still is indigenous Native American property, owned by Indian Americans and Jacob Greenberg, also known by the pseudonym Mark Zuckerberg, the same founder of Facebook that is a descendant of the Rockefeller family. FBI, Mao Zedong, Mussolini, Rockefellers, Rothschilds, or should I say Rothschilds, Cirrhosis, Bohemian Grove, Federal Communications Commission, Federal Commission of Churches, the Vatican, televangelists, Walt Disney, the Walt Disney Company, Hollywood as a collective whole, Washington DC, and other such sanctuary cities, mass genocides, including that of one Andrew Jackson, one Vlad the Impaler, and so on. The Book of Genesis, the three books of Adam and Eve, talk shows, tabloid television, Jim Jones, Jehovah's Witnesses, famous people, Pinterest, CNN, MSNBC, journalism. Post 9-11, every human made war, cartoons from as far back as the 1920s that accurately describe life today, and the school system and its countless scandals as a whole. Twitter this. YouTube it, Bing it, Google it, Pinterest it, Instagram it, Wikipedia it, Reddit it, DeviantArt it, Facebook it. It's all there. It's all there. The signs are all right here. In front of your smart device, when you least expect people, you know the phrase, stop, look, and listen, right? That has never been more true than right now. So I say once again, as per the old, overused, and often much mistranslated adage, stop, look, and listen. In other words, look, read, and see. It's that easy. So, here are some facts that you've got to understand. Facts that will literally save your neck from a proverbial noose and a gallows ball. First of all, 
Life was never meant to be easy, but at the same time, it's not meant to be impossible either. So although it's never going to be easy from any standpoint, it's still possible to live a very simple, very profitable life away from society and its so-called satanic, nazified, socialist, communist, terroristic system. Always listen to God. Not just the God that's mentioned in the Bible, but also the God that created you, the same God that manifests itself within you and talks to you esoterically from within your consciousness. The same God that reigns above us, watching over us every day. The same God that has constantly, without fail, allowed us chance after chance after chance after chance to rewrite history as God would see best fit. But we won't listen to him because we're selectively retarded. Because selective retardation is liberalism. So please, for the love of God and all that's good and right, listen to God. It'll save your life. And it'll grant you an eternal one after you're gone. So fuck the system, to hell with what they tell you, because they want you dead. The public sector is bullshit. It's bullshit. Absolute, foulest of foul, below the barrel, bullshit. Go private sector instead, you'll never regret it. And referencing the school comment I made earlier in this vid, the only schools you're ever going to need are the one that lives inside you, remember God, because he's the one that made us, he made us to live inside us and to allow us to become one with him and to become like him. And the laptop in front of you. The same laptop, the same smart device, the same tablet, the same smartphone, the same television that you watch every day. All other school systems will fail and will fail you without question for just being you. Take for instance that guy who was supposed to give his valedictory speech at his high school graduation, but was forced not to speak at his graduation, despite being a valedictorian who is a Christian who believes in the Almighty God that not only made him, but everything and everyone else too. Democracy, socialism, Marxism, communism, terrorism, the Vatican, the federal councils of churches, the Federal Councils of Communication, the Bavarian Illuminati, pretty much the entirety of Hollywood and their counterparts all share one thing. One thing in common. They serve Satan. Don't be like that, okay? Serve God instead. Help yourself by helping those who need His wisdom. God's wisdom is the only wisdom you need. Because He is wisdom. Society was destined, designed, and made to fail you. All of you. 
and myself to in ways that we are only now just starting to visualize on our own. Which is absolutely understandable in every perfect way. Because God is the very spirit, the very soul of all creation and everything that he made that somehow continues to manage to keep all life on this planet and in every other planet, galaxy, universe, cosmic plane, or fabric of reality going as well as the very foundation of everything that he himself created. We are his creations. He is our creator. We must treat him as our creator. God made us for that reason after all. Because we're all a very minuscule, seemingly invisible, but at the same time, a very crucial part of it. You do not necessarily have to read the Bible or go to church at all to allow yourself the privilege of seeing that. And that's why we have YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, Wikipedia, and art and entertainment in general as a whole. Here's the thing. You're probably asking yourself right now, what needs to be seen? What does need to be seen? Well, to clarify, it's not just the God we know from the Bible, but also, as I mentioned at least twice beforehand, the same God that both created us and all creation from next to nothing dwells deep within us. This is also the same God who effortlessly portrays the roles of seven different but congruently equal higher power forms, each of which are the body of God and of itself, those seven true forms being Son, Father, Spirit, time, space, fate, and nature. And of those seven, fate, also known as death, happens to be the great equalizer that serves as the transition to an eternal afterlife through the spirit in one of three dimensions numbered 12, 13, and 14, but not necessarily in that order. Dimension 12 being heaven. Dimension 13, of course, being hell, which is where most people end up when they've lived a life of abandonment. And the 14th dimension, which we call purgatory which is what we're currently living in. And the former and latter dimensions, of course, serve as a 12th and 13th dimension, as I mentioned previously, which is actually kind of funny. It's really, it's really funny to observe life in that form or fashion, but I'm not wrong for thinking that. I'm not wrong for speculating that, as I've matured quite a hell of a lot just in the last few years as a fellow human being. And I'm sure many of you have too. In other words, and I'm just putting it loose, life is an endless contradiction inside infinitely layered layers within layers of infinite double meanings two-sided innuendos and dual antonyms. Life cannot coexist without death. Neither can yin without yang. 
or light without darkness, or right without wrong, or actions without equal and opposing reactions, nor facts without fiction, nor heroes without villains. Satan would have never been without God having made him first, and God knows this most of all because he had Satan serve alongside God's heaven as an archangel of his, until of course Satan decided to play God and start a rebellion in heaven against him along with half of his angels. This is a regular jack-off speaking to you people. This is a regular, ordinary, autistic human being speaking to you. But you already knew that, didn't you? See, everything requires a middle ground of neutrality, a great equalizer, canceling out all contrasts and comparisons. And there's no need to be scared shitless, and there's no need to freak out, and there's no need to scream and shriek like a little kid in a candy store not getting everything he or she wants. Because in reality, contradiction is the only constant we have and ever had to begin with, which also subsequently makes perfect sense in a genuine way since God made us to hopefully allow ourselves to meet our end of the deal that He and us agreed upon when we were first conceived by our birth givers. This took me 22 years and a month to figure this out. From the time of my birth to August of 2015, and in that fateful moment, in that month, in that year, my Aunt Lisa, my grandmother, Minnie, told me to get right with God. And it took me all that time to figure out the very same thing that they told me in August of 2015. The same thing that God himself instilled in me when I was made to be a part of him some five quinquennia ago. A quinquennium is five years, by the way, so you do the math. Five fives or what? So keep in mind, at that point, I was an early 20s man living in a group home with people who were mentally retarded. They couldn't help making mistakes because they couldn't figure out how to learn from them because their brain wouldn't allow them. Essentially, their brains were broken. And in many cases, they were born that way which is absolutely justified in comparison to the selectively retarded that secretly run our biosphere, which is worth a quadrillion dollars, by the way, as far as I know, right into the ground. So, where mentally retarded means that you can't help it, being selectively retarded means that you can help it, but you choose not to, so you continue to be the problem, even though you could have just as easily became the solution to said problem. And that's completely acceptable in their case, when I was living in a group home with them, because they're meant to be admired. I admire people of mental retardation or some other similar form of ailment in such a degree who are able to live confidently despite not really knowing or being able how to do things through hardly any fault of their own which is actually very funny to me as I mentioned before since 
people with mental retardation like those I once lived with have it perfect they're living like they're in a mansion compared to the so-called selectively retarded powers that claim to be who suffer from an infinitely worse form of intellectual illness of course I would call that liberalism because according to one of my hashtags liberalism is selective retardation look the hashtag up you'll find it because selective retardation and liberalism both have the same meaning they're defined as being a kind of twisted deranged unfathomable god complex where those with the most wealth power influence and property in most cases especially since I observe daily how every Democrat and quite a few Republicans I should say throughout American and world history choose to worship Satan and money Satan and money go together like peas and carrots money has become the root of all evil because a select few have hoarded it to where that's the only thing they give a damn about anymore. Hence the phrase, money is the root of all evil, but only if you let it be. Satan, terrorists, and other forms of evil as a whole, and all of their counterparts, use money as an unbelievable fortune and luck as a means to brag about how they're king of the world or how they're above the law because the law doesn't apply to the people who wrote it decisively choosing also not to understand that the law that they wrote specifically doesn't compare to that of God's. The only law is God. The only word is God. The only thing that matters is God because without God, nothing would exist. And neither would nobody. Because the only law to follow is God's and God's alone because he knows everything we've done are doing now and will do and understands us like nobody or nothing else and it all makes perfect sense it's all perfectly logical it's absolutely sensical in every sense of the word despite my having said it awkwardly when you see how God is us in spirit trying to help our mortal selves become as omniscient, aware, and understanding as the same God who lives inside us as individual parts of Him. Which, again, is both comedically ironic and at the same time, in its truth, frighteningly damning. Do you get it? You see where I'm going with this? Listen up. God is the only word we should follow. The only law we should heed. Let's get to some more proof. Hear me out. Don't go to college. Don't waste $200,000 a year to learn how to live the Karl Marx life. Because they're not going to teach you anything. You're not going to learn anything from these so-called bullshit professors. You're not going to learn. Not even in hell. 
So, I say this. If you want to go to college without having to spend $200,000 every single year to learn a bunch of crap that you already knew but never completely realized, you just have to do one thing. Turn to internet sites such as YouTube, Google, Bing, Twitter, or Pinterest, and they will give you a better education in one hour than any community college, graduate school, Ivy League, or any other kind of college as a collective whole will ever give you in eight years. Eight years worth of education, the right way, all summed up in one hour if you look up stuff that you need to know on YouTube, Google, Bing, Twitter, and Pinterest. It's that easy. It is that easy. Yes, it's that easy. You see, intelligence, being the caveat that it is, has one hell of a hilarious and funny way of telling you that you know much more than most people assume or care enough to let on, acknowledge, or even admit. Even funnier than that, there are quite a few things that most likely distinguish you from pretty much the vast majority of your fellow humanity. And probably myself in some cases. By the way, I'm not a genius. I'm not a savant. I'm just another mentally ill human being who happens to know a hell of a lot more than anyone else wants me to. Because reasons. And these things include an unbiased, fair opinion, procrastination, we just call that disorganization of an unusual sense, essentially, a balanced and just an honest personality of understanding, of fathoming, of wisdom, a passion for the truth, an overclocked mind, because of course I have an overclocked mind myself. That's why I sometimes spend weeks or even months in between saying I'm going to do, say, a commission for one of my friends and actually going about drawing one for said friends. Controlled insanity, for instance, talking to yourself, and even answering yourself. Above average creativity, even the slightest amount of common sense and street smarts will do. And I have basically neither. But I know enough to take care of myself. I know enough to help people out. So I guess at the same time, I do have a slight amount of common sense and street smart somewhat. Because I allow myself to. An ego that you can allow yourself to keep in check every day, every moment, all year round. A really pinpoint impeccable sense of humor because there's comedy and a great sense of timing and then of course what I mentioned just now impeccable timing and coordination or basically rhythm and songs meanings which is basically just rhythm as a general whole because it requires timing and coordination of the highest caliber because who doesn't need that? Who doesn't seek that? Nobody that I know. 
So if you have most of these qualities, if you have, say, I don't know, even half of these qualities, do you realize that you are instantly smarter than any American congressman and every Democratic president put together, not only in the history of the United States of Northern America, but the entire earth in which you walk on. Because you're only as much a part of God as anything or anyone else. Referring to a Google Docs document that I made some time back when I myself was a community college student taking an online psychology class. Because this is where this is where I was able to become wiser, stronger, mentally. Cognitive distance, a mental state, a contradiction or series of between behaviors and certain selective attitudes, which is basically where you think about doing one thing, but decide unconsciously, without thought, or any fleeting delay whatsoever to do something completely different. For example, I remember one morning I was told to do dishes and sweep up two rooms in the house, but I unconsciously chose to sweep all the rooms in the house and take out the trash and vacuum my bedroom and then take care of the dishes because at that moment I did everything I was supposed to do and then some, including other things that I didn't have to be reminded to do because I already knew to do it. So not only did I experience cognitive dissonance, but I managed to do every house chore at that particular moment on that same day, which is basically a sign of the times, is it not? See, we motivate ourselves or are motivated to reduce cognitive dissonance in order to conform to or meet the standards and expectations and criterion and recommendations and requirements of multiple groups of people simultaneously, namely your family, yourself, your friends, and of course the authority, not meaning the government. But in reality, meaning God. So it's safe to say that if someone catches someone else making a mistake or doing something out of the ordinary that they shouldn't be doing, then the person that gets caught should remind oneself to avoid that wrongdoing as much as humanly possible, whatever it takes, and do what the world around them considers to be lawful and right. And by the world, I really mean God. Needless to say, if one is to reduce interaptitudinal or interbehavioral or interbehavioral, I should say, contradictions, see what I did there? I made a pronunciation mistake. I've done quite a few of these already throughout this video. So don't be surprised if this isn't the last one. Then one must be reminded of the consequences and reactions of committing whatever wrongdoing they did before that they're trying to avoid doing as much as possible. Aside from reminding yourself or being reminded of a mistake's subsequent punishments, don't hesitate to write down whatever you need to do to make sure that you avoid making that same flaw, that same cognitive dissonant error. You can also practice a few mental exercises by pretending to do something to warm yourself 
for the real thing. To warm yourself up for showtime. Most, if not all of us, do that on a regular basis every other day, or every single day, in most cases. Consecutively, mind you. Another way to reduce cognitive dissonance is by getting advice from a few close relatives, friends, or family members of yours on how to avoid making the same mistake at least twice. Yes, it's really that simple. Are you getting it now? Good. Let's move on. That's the only way that I'm going to get through to you so that you people can fully understand the severity of everything that you and to a degree myself have allowed this world to become. You should homeschool your kids and keep them as far away from any public private charter magnet boarding Ivy League or pretty much any collegiate or university school as possible. If you send your kids to a public educational system which by the way is based upon the communist socialist and liberalistic agendas of one Karl Marx who died about 200 years ago but had no idea as to how profound of a catastrophic impact his ideologies would lead on the earth, then your kids are going to be indoctrinated from here to Point Nemo and back a hundred thousand times over because the liberals, who by the way as I've mentioned are selectively retarded, Notice the difference between selective and mental retardations, respectively. One is excusable, the other is not. Will not teach your kids the proper ideologies on how to survive and be self-sufficient. Arm your kids, your families, your neighbors, and yourselves with the knowledge of understanding that YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and even Wikipedia, despite the fact that it's the only site online where every and any single article ever published can be edited on a whim by anyone is a much better school than any other previously mentioned kind of school put together and merged in a cold dark vacuum Dimo Borgir reference and I'm not talking about the fictional place by J.R.R. Tolkien either I'm talking about the Norwegian band the Norwegian project. A musical like that. So why should you do this? Well, it's actually simple. A toddler, a group home resident, a dog, a cat, and even a man with Down syndrome would tell you that it's going to save your life which, as the man with Down Syndrome said, as he testified before Congress that day, your life is worth living. And you might think that it's a joke, and you might think that it's been told to you too many times in too many different ways that you just don't know which way to believe, but this way, complete 
in all its brutal honesty and historical accuracy is the only form of this particular message that you should believe. So, I have some advice for you. Follow your heart. Do what's best for you and be like no one. Be original. Get creative when you're completely alone and come up with a few original characters, also known as OCs, in case you're wondering. Flesh out parallel universes using the cognitive power of the God that both lives inside you and presides watchfully above. Make the most of your life, because becoming one with God will allow you to unleash your inner creator, your inner composer of life's work, because all people who are artists or entertainers are in fact composers of life's work. They don't just get that title without a reason. They're not just given that title. They obtain it. Whenever you come across Luciferian, Weishauptian, Satanic temptation, ignore it as much as humanly possible. And for all the times that you give in to that temptation, don't hesitate to pray to the same God that created you and serves as your spiritual guide and watches you above and repent to him to ask him for forgiveness he'll forgive you he won't think anything of it he won't hold it against you but he'll remind you in his own little way to ignore the Weishauptian agenda listen to meditative music on YouTube there are quite a few of them that are in many cases hours long and non-stop with no commercial plugs in between that are available for listening to if ever you need a morning an afternoon an evening or even an entire day to yourself or want to have sound related accompaniment while you take your nightly nap from sundown to sunup Keep in touch with your God. Pray to Him only when you see best fit or when you have an anything better to do with your life. If you ever need motivation from someone much more unfortunate or handicapped, listen to speeches made by guys like that guy with Down Syndrome who believe that, as I've said before, your life is worth living and instill such messages into your everyday life and conscience. If ever you need to laugh at people making fools of themselves on globalized television and streaming sessions online, watch shows like True TV's World's Dumbest, America's Funniest Home Videos, Ridiculousness, any of the early Happy Harmonies cartoons, which I'll get to in a moment. Looney Tunes, anything Tom and Jerry, anything Tex Avery, you know, the works. Regardless, and I know because God tells me this unconsciously all the time, even when I'm not aware of it at all, you should always remember that you'll never really be alone with God on your side, spiritually guiding you into your spiritual journey of prepared transcendence. If ever you need a bit of buried silence, hence the name of an Ice Ages album, I know because I listened to the work of a man named Richard Lederer, also known by his music name, protector of summoning and deeper than can read his fame. Listen to a few of your favorite kinds of music personally. 
and allow yourself to immerse yourself into that atmosphere. In my case, I like listening to atmospheric epic metal and metal of quite a few kinds. I like listening to occasional rap, occasional outlaw country, electronic compositions, anything KMFDM Ice Ages or Jim Kirkwood, stuff like that. And always bear mentally in your brain this ineffable, insufferable fact. Whenever you think you're not alone, the God that lives inside you and made you to where you can become an equal part of them as everything and everyone else can just as easily become the same God, mind you, that reigns high and mighty on a throne of eternal wisdom and justice watching over you as well as myself and everything that ever was, is, or will be. Listen to the very reminder that I hear in my sleep from God himself regardless of whether or not I'm aware of it. He tells me every night, and I know this, I don't know exactly what he says because I'm not God, but I know for a fact that he tells me in some form or way, as long as you have my spirit living in you, guiding you at each moment, you will never be alone. You understand? It really is that simple. Let's continue. By the way, let's all shit on Adam Weishaupt once again. This time in complete unison. Alright? He said, as the founder of the Illuminati, conceal the very fact of our existence from the profane. If, and in this case when, they discover us, conceal our real objective by profession of benevolence. If our real objective is perceived, pretend to disband and relinquish the whole goddamn thing. Except he didn't actually say the word goddamn, but he might as well have. But assume another name and put forward new agents. Is it really necessary at this point for me to tell you once again that he's the founder of the Illuminati? Seriously. And what about what about Louis Farrakhan? The man who is an Islamic State sympathizer issuing a Sunday call for an end to white men. He is the leader of the nation of Islam because he says according to his bullshit beliefs assuming that he uses his religion as a crutch and a walker and a wheelchair that their nature is not in harmony. Since when? Since when? Never. Since never. The white man's nature has always been somewhat in harmony with the rest of the world. The white man is no different from the indigenous man. The indigenous man is no different than the black man. The black man is no different than the Asian man. The Asian man is no different than the African man. The African man is no different than the European man. The European man is no different than the Australian man. The cavemen were no different than we were. And they certainly are no different than we are now. So, I want you to take a look right now. 
Take a look at this mug. This fucking mug. Seriously. Look at this mug. Look at him. Look at him. I mean, for God's sake, kid. Louis Farrakhan, the great fucktard that he is. The great lunatic that he is. Wants to commit genocide against an entire ethnicity of people just as Andrew Jackson almost succeeded at doing some 200 years before with his trail of tears by the way by the way let me let me tell you something Jehovah's Witnesses as I've mentioned if I haven't mentioned it already then I sure as hell will now are a cult. A watered down version of Weishaupt's Bavarian Illuminati and basically a dumbed down version of Weishaupt's anti Christian regime, otherwise known by the more popular acronym of WAR, because that's literally what they stand for WAR that brainwashes people to think, feel, act, live, eat, or even function a certain way, not just from a general speech, but from a universal standpoint, and essentially plays and even mocks God. They mock God! In ways that leave any logic sensibly reasonable person to believe that Jehovah's Witnesses are in fact the very cult that was just now described in such painstakingly meticulously accurate recital courtesy of your friend Truth. and also the guy who found in Wikipedia, there's a Wikipedia page of this. Jimmy Wales explained to painstaking detail the obviously ironic history of Jehovah's Witnesses and all of their failed prophecies. Okay, get this. 1877, Christ kingdoms would help fall away over the earth in 1914. They predicted this again in 1891 and 1904. That did not happen. They predicted not too long after that their generation would see Armageddon meaning World War One. That did not happen. 1920, Messiah's kingdom would be established at around the end of that decade to bring worldwide peace where God would begin restoring the earth. That did not happen. They predicted this again in 1924 that did not happen. 1934, Armageddon was too close for comfort, basically is what they were saying. But it wasn't close enough, apparently. And it's still not close enough. 1940s, months remaining until Armageddon, and Armageddon was immediately before us, which has not happened yet and did not happen when they made those predictions. 1951. This generation will see Armageddon's fulfillment. That hadn't happened yet then, it hasn't happened yet as of now. 
you get the trend. Pretty much every prediction that they have made, every prediction, every fucking prediction that they have made has been a resounding, unanimous failure. And I'm not going to cue the sound effect from the announcer from Super Smash Brothers Melee because I don't need to. Oh, do you want me to? Tough shit. What did you expect? A video full of memes? I mean, technically, that's what it is in some standpoint or certain life, but still. I mean, yeah. Jehovah's Witnesses is a cult, basically. They lie to you, they feed you bullshit from a satanic tablecloth that has been dirtied up with Lucifer semen, piss, and shit on a daily basis since they were first founded some 150 years ago as of the year of this recording. I'm telling you now, if you haven't allowed yourself to see it yet, then you are a moron, and therefore the problem. I mean, I mean, what more proof is required for me to further convince you that society was a stillborn failure from the get-go, namely the society that our ancestors willingly and shamelessly helped Satan himself create. Satan's society isn't this. It's not society anymore. It's hypocrisy. Complete hypocrisy. Apostasy. Absolute idiocracy. And God knows this because Satan was one of his angels in heaven, as I mentioned before, and I'm reminding you again now, before he inevitably started a war against God and half of his angels in heaven, which eventually saw God victorious unanimously over Satan and his fallen angels, and then he banished them to a bottomless pit of misery. We call that hell. Some call it Dante's Inferno. Some call that karma. Some call it justice. I simply call it a wrath of God that's been ongoing for millions and millions and millions and millions of years. I have a lot longer than we care to let on. All right, now. I want you to try this on for size. You know Canada, right? Our neighbors of the north. You know Canada, right? No, seriously, try this on for size. So our neighbors of the north, Canada, have gotten completely obama by Thanks predominantly to their great comedic sketch and joke of a leader, Justin Trudeau, whom you willingly voted for, by the way, just because his last name has the word truth in it doesn't mean that he's automatically going to be truthful in anything he says because he's a big fat liar. In an attempt to allow your immense nation an opportunity to positively mature. So Canada, I ask you this. Was it worth being taken over by ISIS? Because if you haven't known this by now, you should, because the deep state, the Bavarian Illuminati, Jehovah's Witnesses, the Democratic Party, the Socialists, the Nazis, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, and every utmost powerful family that have all the wealth in circulation and all the purchasing power they could possibly ask for and then some are teaming up, all 7.6 million of them, hence the one-tenth of a percent to be accurate, 
to play God by manipulating our biosphere. Hello? Why are we not doing something about it yet? Why are we not doing something about it? I mean, if you were me, you'd do something about it right fucking now. As soon as you finish watching this video, that's what I mean. But, and, and what about you guys over there in Ireland? What about you guys in Ireland? You guys were dumb enough and completely ignorant enough to repeal your nation's eighth constitutional amendment that was supposed to prohibit abortion but apparently doesn't anymore because you obviously voted to get rid of it. I don't know why you guys chose to do this and I don't even care. All I know is that you're going to have a lot more of those Muslims in your nation now. A lot more of those Islamists. A lot more of those Barack Obamas, those George Soroses, those Rothschilds, those Rockefellers. You're going to have a whole hell of a lot more of those in your country. So bye bye Ireland and bye bye Canada. And speaking of Canada, a few Canadian officers of the Royal Guard got ousted from their Mountie policing positions simply because of the fact that they were Christian and not Islamic or Muslim because they didn't believe in Muhammad or Akbar. Sounds like Canada just shot their own battleship. In fact, they've been doing this for decades. It's, it's nothing new. They've been doing this for too damn long. Meanwhile, back over here in our country, in America, we willingly elected people who abuse their power so much that they would appoint judges that obviously don't deserve to be called judges, by the way. They, they deserve to be called obstructionists. Who sentence a cop to five months in jail for repeatedly raping a kid, a child. The most vulnerable of vulnerable people, a child, a young one when he really should have gotten the death penalty. Seriously. And then of course, there are people like, say, Kathleen Demler, also known by her maiden name, Kathleen Schunk, who, by the way, was born March the 19th, 1938, to Joseph and Gertrude of Wabasso. She married Dennis at St. Anne's in Wabasso in 57 and had two children, Gina and Jay, five years after which she would become pregnant by her husband's brother. Her husband's brother! Because apparently the ball doth not fall far from the tree. Lyle and moved to California, the shithole of a state that we once considered a sacred land that was obviously never a sacred land to start with, abandoning her offspring, Gina and Jay, in the process, and thus giving up complete custody of them to her own parents, Joseph and Gertrude. And. The reason why you don't see obituaries like this ever is because of how accurate and how honest and brutally truthful they are. She passed away on May the 31st, 2018, aged 90, or actually 80. I mean, if she were 90, she would have died 10 years after, but she's 80 because 1938 plus 80 is 2018. 
in Springfield and will now face the judgment. She will not be missed by Gina and Jay, who fully understand that their sport is a better place without it. And Hillary Clinton and the Clinton family and mainstream media journalists and Democrats and some Republicans and Islam and Muslim and you know the people who give their lives up in an attempt to save our skins and provide us with the freedom that we most likely would have never gotten on our own if we were in their shoes. They're the real athletes, not the athletes that you see on a football field or a basketball court or a baseball mound who kneel during Francis Scott Key's anthem set to music. I'll name three off the bat right now. 16 year old Audi Murphy, five foot five, a buck and 10 cents soaking wet, the most decorated US combat soldier of the Second World War, encountered a German machine gun crew in 1944 who feigned their surrender only to shoot his best buddy, his best friend, a fellow soldier. Murphy then killed everyone in the gun's nest, used their weaponry to kill every single do batter within a hundred yards, taking two more machine gun nests and a bunch of snipers in the process, and in a separate battle, completely different from the one just described, but also during that same war. He jumped into a burning M tank tank destroyer, using it to annihilate every single enemy in sight, leaping clear of it before it exploded. And this guy did it while suffering from a pretty good case of malaria. I'll name another example. World War One's Alvin York filed as an objector. He was denied, so he did the right thing, capturing a battalion on his fucking arm. One of 17 American soldiers designated to sneak around and take a fortified machine gun encampment guarding a German railroad and stood his ground when all of his companions were either killed or forced to flee by killing two dozen Germans in such brute fashion that everyone else in the encampment, totaling 133 German soldiers, possibly including Hitler, surrendered to him. We have another guy named Michael J. Fitzmaurice guarding an airship in Vietnam who weathered the explosion of a grenade and continued fighting during the Vietnam War. 1971, he had just completed his shift when Vietnamese soldiers threw three grenades into his bunker, managed to lose two of them back out jumping onto the third, covering it with his jacket. Shrapnel wounds, partial blindness, ruptured eardrums did not stop the man because he jumped up and began firing on the enemy. An incoming grenade destroyed his rifle, attacked Barefisted instead until the enemy retreated. So, these are the people that I'd like to call athletes, unlike the so-called 
athletes in pro sports who kneel during anthems and promote their so-called agenda when in reality it's not their own agenda it's the agenda of the followers and conspirators of Weishaupt's anti-Christian regime also known as war also known as the Bavarian Illuminati also known as Weishaupt's conspirators also known as Satan's Legion John Brennan is one of them because he doesn't do evidence he says the guys who founded Twitter including Jack Dorsey they are stupid enough selectively to censor people like you and people like myself because we're realists and we voted for Trump and we support Trump with our lives and then we have a guy named Albert Einstein the man who effortlessly came up with this relativity theory e equals mc squared he said if a cluttered desk is a sign of a cluttered mind of what then is an empty desk a sign seriously and you wonder why 96% of all donations from journalists went to Hillary Clinton during her failed and non-existent 2016 campaign and probably her 2008 campaign as well and her upcoming third failed presidential campaign which she will obviously run in 2020 because she can't get over the fact that she lost to the greatest businessman that ever lived Donald John Trump who by the way had his own demons but at least allows himself to admit them unlike every Democrat that ever became a congressman in American or even world history the people in Hollywood they don't give a shit for serial molesters and abusers like Morgan Freeman but they'll get mad as hell over a tweet posted by Roseanne Barr and cancel her reboot and over the next week attempt to censor her show in its initial entirety of its run on every station every channel and then they want to reboot the show again without including Roseanne itself to take on a liberalist agenda to focus on a liberal how sad is that is that not sorry for what it's pretty damn sorry to me say that that reminds me that reminds me you know Obama right he attempted to do something so unfathomably corrupt and obstructionist that the banks of whom he attempted to bribe into letting Iran convert six or seven billion through the US banks simply told them that they wouldn't do it they told him no could you imagine attempting doing something so anti human so subhuman so terroristic that every bank in the world completely flat out gives you a hard no 
Can you imagine that? And what about the Publishers Clearinghouse? Oh, right, because they're not worth mentioning because they're a scam. Just like Kaepernick is an inside job. Like 9-11 with George W. was an inside job. Like Pearl Harbor was an inside job on behalf of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Like America entering World War I under Woodrow Wilson was an inside job. And pretty much the entirety of democratic history, not just in this country, but in the entire world. This has gotten so bad that faggotry indoctrination, LGBTQNB, is being imposed upon and force fed to you kids out there age 3 to 21. You're being forced to accept this bullshit even though you know that it's complete bullshit. Andrew McKay asking for an immunity deal for what? What is it all worth? What, I mean, hell, that, that reminds me, man. That reminds me. You know that cartoon from 1935 that was made by Hugh Harmon and Rudolph Ising back when they were at MGM? The same guys who blatantly ripped off Disney and his works by copying and pasting it into their own in some form or fashion. Albeit in ways that nobody thought imaginable were possible. These guys. Oh man, let me tell you, these guys. <laughs> Those guys, man. They created perhaps the most historically accurate MGM cartoon the world over in the history of humanity. The cartoon in question is Good Little Monkeys. Speak no evil, see no evil, hear no evil. No. We're the goody goody monkeys everywhere we go. Seriously. And this was this was during the reign, not the presidency, but the reign because Franklin Delano Roosevelt was a king. He was not a president, he was a tyrant and a king. And a jackass. And a jackass. But these guys, these three little monkeys that you see near the center, are trying to evade the clutches of Lucifer, also known as Satan also known as Barack Obama, also known as every Democrat ever, also known as James Comey, also known as CNN, also known as Jim Acosta, also known as MSNBC, also known as mainstream media journalists, also known as the very Illuminati, also known as Adam Weishaupt. The list goes on. And by sheer coincidence, through the skin of their teeth, they somehow come out victorious over the devil in the end. And they return back to their original mantle with their original poses which they sustained at the very start of the animation of said cartoon which begins after the intro of course. Actually there's two. The first one is Coffee the Lion which is actually Jackie the Lion disguised as her brother and, of course, the title screens that take up about 25 seconds collectively, 30 seconds, and then it's over. Comes to an end. That's basically, that's basically society as a whole. Don't be the devil, people. Be the good little monkeys. 
except instead of speaking, hearing, and seeing no evil, expose the evil, call out the evil, and listen to the evil enough to know that it's complete and utter bullshit. There's not much else to say there is here, you know? I mean, for real, man. Is there anything else that I have not told you that you don't already know? I'm not telling you anything new, people. In fact, I'm nowhere near the first person to warn you about this shit. Literally tens of millions of people throughout history have warned you about this. Jesus Christ warned you about this. Julius Caesar warned you about this. You know, Homer warned you about this. You know, the guy who wrote the Iliad, the Odyssey, right? He warned you about this. But seriously, though, I could name so many more people. You know, Abe Lincoln, he, he warned you about this. George Washington, many of our founding fathers, not just of this country, but of this world and its modern civilization as a whole, they tried to warn you about this. Samuel Clemens, also known as Mark Twain, he warned you about this. You know, Richard Dawson, he warned you about this. Paul Winchell, he warned you about this. Mel Blank, I can't count how many times he tried to warn you about this, but he warned you about this. Martin Luther King Jr. warned you about this. And there are still millions out there still warning you about this, people. How much longer are you going to keep allowing yourself to believe in the bullshit that the so-called deep state is selling. How much longer are you going to believe in their crap? Because that's what it is. It's crap. And what's, what's most sad about that is that India, the most populous country in all the earth, do you realize, do you realize, not only is it most populated, out of all the other nations but at the same time it's also the most terrorism prone in many respects I know this because I know a guy who lives there who has seen it firsthand in his own family and almost everyone he meets in real life and even some of the people online you know he wrote he wrote this this short free verse poem of some sorts called Beauty. And it speaks a lot about the country that he lives in and its lack of state mentally, psychologically, and physically as a collective whole. He says that admiration for a female's beauty is solely aesthetics and depends on the female's personality. He says that there is no special interest in lust from his viewpoint as to touch a body with cough, slime, and bile is not any great fantasy. And despite that some people reeking or making, I should say, a, a genuine and serious note about this won't consider their own faith which is actually quite ironic isn't it you know so many so many people in India are literally killing themselves right now because of this Muslim anti-christian anti-religious annihilatory regime you understand I mean this is just this is only a matter of time, people. It's happening all over the world, and you happen to be caught in the crossfires, 
and you people won't believe it. But sooner or later, you're going to have to. You're going to have to believe it. You know that that 13-year-old kid, that teenager, who only spent, I don't know, 1500 bucks at best, at worst maybe? This 13-year-old kid built a shed of his own. He did it pretty much all by himself for the most part. The media doesn't bat an eye. And yet the same media, the same hypocritical bullshit streaming media, will masturbate and jack off and beat themselves off to no end over an undeserving celebrity and one of their hand-picked Illuminati poster children, like Selena Gomez, winning a Woman of the Year award just because she decided to hang out with a few of her rich, ditzy friends at a very popular beach somewhere in the Bahamas or California or wherever the fuck, right? Can you imagine? I mean, you, you gotta understand, seriously. You must remember this. There aren't many people out there that are going to tell you this as brutally honest as I am. I'm telling you this with such brute honesty that you just can't ignore it. It's all there, black and white, plain as day. If you don't see it, then I don't feel sorry for you. You're just as much a part of the problem as the people who are oppressing you are. Because you still want to side with them, but you don't need to anymore. The fact is simple. There's a guy named Albert Pike, one of the Illuminati's henchmen. One of Albert, actually no, Albert Pike was one of Adam Weishaupt's henchmen. He said, as a nihilist conspirator, we, speaking on behalf of the Illuminati, shall unleash the nihilists and atheists, and we shall provoke a formidable social Platicism, which in all its horror will show clearly to the nations and to people of different nationalities the effects of absolute atheism, the origin of absolute savagery, and of the most bloody turmoil, of the most deathly and bloody turmoil. Do you understand? This guy who was clearly in league with Satan from moment one of his life, Albert Pike, said that. So this guy, who quite a few of you worship, wished death on you all. They wished, he wished death on you all with this prophetic statement regarding his buddy and personal fuck toy, Adam Weishaupt's Bavarian Illuminati. And you know, the United Nations, what about the United Nations? The worst decision made by any president in history was the foundation of the UN. You realize that the United Nations consist entirely, entirely of power-hungry, war-mongering, attention-whoring, douchebag yes-men, who will do anything and everything, especially anything that's illegal, to rid of us for all time. And for what? Because they're in league with Satan? Because they want us all to die? Because they don't care about any of us enough to stop sucking donkey dick? And horse semen? And eating shit from the pony's ass? And that's no disrespect to my little pony or its creator, Myron Foss. I have the utmost respect for that person. Having created an entire generation of bronies 
and sister MLB fans who undoubtedly love the product in all its span, especially with the 2010s reboot of the popular series. You know, because my little pony friendship is magic. Anyway, back, back to the point. Back to the point. The fact is actually as remarkably simple as simple can be. Here's the thing. Barack Obama, who, in my case, I, and in almost every one of your cases, you, as a collective all, were naive enough and brainwashed enough for fucking eight years to vote for. By the way, this guy's presidency was an entire lie, a big ass lie, just like his entire life. Barry Sotoro's life is an absolute lie and will forever be a lie because he's the biggest fraud in human history. Even bigger than Bernie Madoff, even bigger than the guy whom the Ponzi scheme is named after, even bigger than the guy who successfully hid his true identity from us and came up with his pseudonym of William Shakespeare. By the way, 400 years after he dies, we still can't figure out what his real, actual identity is. We know it's not William Shakespeare. It's obviously not. His real identity may never be known. In fact, it'll never truly be known, no matter how much we advance in our technology and our science and biology subjects, because this guy hid his identity from the real world so perfectly and so immaculately well. You understand? And the four guys who are believed to be closest to representing the actual life of William Shakespeare were not born in the same year as the man we refer to as William Shakespeare, nor did they die in the same year as Shakespeare himself, or the man portraying the William Shakespeare gimmick. Because of that, Barack Obama, being the Islamic terrorist that he is, not only founded ISIS, not only created MS-13, he got an entire Democratic Party to fall for his bullshit and force themselves to indoctrinate themselves with his satanic, Bavarian, Illuminist, Weishauptian ideology. The anti-human ideology. Do you understand? I don't think I have anything else, physically or mentally speaking, that I can say to further prove how fucked you are as a human race in any detail or respect without having to repeat myself for countless hours on end. But I will say this. This is what I will say. I will say this. We are the problem. But we don't have to be anymore. We gotta turn to God now we got to get right with him. He's the only thing we have. Remember what I said. He's the only thing we've ever had and the only thing we've got left. And once we rid ourselves of that, we're going to end up committing earthly suicide, so to speak. People, it's time to turn to God. You know he's always right. You know he'll never steer you wrong. You know that he will never fail you in any way, shape, or form. If there's any better time than right now to start listening and following through on what God tells you, just as I try to do every day, I'd love to hear it. Because there's never been a better time than now. 
seriously. Because yesterday is gone. Tomorrow might never come. Meanwhile, today, on the other hand, today is yesterday, today, and tomorrow all rolled into one. And you didn't know it yet prior to me beginning my speech some two hours ago, but you do now. So now you have no excuse not to know it. You know how they say seeing is believing? It's only going to get more historically accurate and proven true over time. You know the old saying, knowledge is power? That's never been more true because it'll literally save your life. God is everything that we have left. He's the last thing we've got left. And once we lose him, we're dead. We don't deserve to exist anymore. We're just extinct. Seriously. It's time to wake the fuck up. Wake up from your slumber. And for the love of everything that is good, just, and right. Heed this warning. And may God help us all. And may God save us all. And bless us all. Thank you for your time.